Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another tutorial. Today we'll be talking about how to make a feature based build up. Let's get right into it. Alright, so before we get started, I just want to do a huge shout out to Nurko. He's actually the one who helped me create this build up. So all credit goes to him. I highly recommend for you to check him out and his music. He's a very talented artist. Uh, and just in case, if you're looking for uh, to take coaching with him, he's actually not offering any coaching currently as he's full. So I just want to put that out there just in case that you're looking for him. Unfortunately, he doesn't have any available spots. But yeah, let's get right into this tutorial. Alright, so uh, just uh, starting off, actually this um, build up actually is missing like a top uh, lead, which we can kind of get into later. But um, I'm not gonna be able to show that lead because this is actually a, a vocal chop that Nurko uh, showed me or actually helped me create. So I'm not allowed to share that, but I can uh, share with you guys, um, you know, everything else basically. But yeah, before we kind of like look into the whole entire like build up and um, production and stuff like that, I kind of wanted to share with you like what I had previously uh, before Nurko helped me out, uh, you know, create the build to what it is now. Uh, just to kind of show you a difference of like, you know, you know what what kind of makes uh, a build up sound more full and I guess uh, pleasing to listen to. All right, so this is basically the uh, previous build up I had prior to having a Nur Nurko basically fix up everything. And uh, basically I just had like one instrument in there, maybe a bass, and like I just used a uh, build up drum loop that I actually got from one of Blanque's patrons just as a placeholder. But uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and audition the one that I made uh, at first. Obviously it was missing the I'll be fucked up, you know, whatever as a closing uh, line. But that was basically the um, first one that I initially had. And then th again, this is what uh, Nurko helped me create. So yeah, obviously you can see like a, uh, or hear a huge difference between the both of them. You know, the other one sounds a little bit empty, not as exciting. And then the one, when Nurko fixed it up, it basically sounds full and complete. And I think that's what really uh, makes a build up, you know, sound, uh, I think complete or basically good, I would say. But yeah, let's go ahead and uh, get right into the um, first layer. Uh, so I actually have a vocal chop here that Nurko helped me create, but I'm not allowed to share it. Uh, you know, just because Nurko's the one who made it. But uh, ideally, you would want, you know, you, you don't always have to, but, um, you know, at least for this particular drop, it would actually sound nicer if you had, um, you know, some kind of like lead or your drop lead or melody come in basically with an auto filter. And I can kind of show you like an example later, you know, not with this vocal shot, but, you know, just to give you the basic idea with some random melody or something. But uh, yeah, it'd be nicer to have that on top just because it basically covers that, uh, you know, uh, prepares the listener for the drop and what they're about to hear for the drop, basically. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and go into uh, the first, you know, repeating vocal thing build up here. So basically, all I really did was um, I just took the right here. I'll be fucked up if you can be right here. And then just take that right here, right there. And then um, just repeated it like so. Initially, like I just had it like that and it was, I didn't really have any processing on it. And the reason why we uh, decided to add the processing cause it was rather dry, uh, just having it like this. So that's the process one. And then this is the non-process. So yeah, pretty dry. So that's basically mainly the reason why the processing was there. Also, I'd recommend for you to like take care, to get rid of the click thing or um, yeah, basically get rid of that. And I think, um, yeah, and basically since I already have like creep fades on clip edges on, um, it automatically should already have like a 
fade in here. I guess I guess it doesn't, but um, I also had a fade on on the left side here. Yeah, and then basically um, after the first, I think initial like four bars, rather than having you know right here, then you would just kind of have right like that, and then just have it build up. Obviously, have that you know taken off or whatever. And this part it kind of just disappears because automation, which I'll show you later. And just in case you're wondering, because this is actually something that I used to wonder was like, why did like certain notes like tend to work really well? Or like you can just repeat them over and over and it would be okay to hear kind of like why the, the theory behind it basically. And basically I think the best way that I can explain it and actually I learned this from Amadeus, so big shout out to him, was basically like, you know, rather than, and this is also a really great melody trick too, uh, or tip, but basically like rather than looking at what notes fit in particular a particular chord, you know, because this is how I used to look at things was like, I would only kind of like maybe make melodies around certain notes that would perhaps sound, you know, work with the chord. But that's kind of like a limited way of, you know, creating things. So let's just say, for example, you have your basic like C major chord here in the key of C. I'm going to put this up. Before I would only make melodies or create melodies around, you know, what would work in the chord. So I, I knew like a C would work, an E would work, you know, G and maybe like the sevenths or the ninths and stuff like that but i didn't really like diversify my melody making into being able to use the whole scale so basically you know rather than looking at it you know of what works in the chord you know look at it, look at it in a sense of like what's in the key so like um you know if you're if maybe if you guys watched my previous videos but basically you know the the one of the key and the five of the key is the safe note so in this you know particular case uh, in the key of C, and this track was actually in the key of C as well. Uh, one is the C, which is a safe note that you can essentially play over any chord. And then the G is the fifth of the key, um, which is also a safe note that you can essentially play over, you know, any uh, notes of the chords, basically. And, you know, obviously, as long as it's not like clashing with your vocal and stuff like that, uh, more or less, you know, or, you know, if you mix it right too, that's another conversation, but more or less, you know, you can use, most likely use or probably use that note uh, over the whole course of your entire four chord progression. So, you know, basically like I used to look at it that, you know, I can only make, 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 uh, try to make certain melodies or notes in a certain key, but, you know, when Amadex told me that you can actually create notes around the whole co concept of, you know, hovering around the one and five, and then just basically using any note in the key or the scale rather of C, so that's basically all the white notes, then it will most likely work. Um, you know, and that's basically kind of like how those like the, the repeating, you know, over and over, it's always resolving back on the root note or the one, which is a C, uh, when he's saying here. Bye, right here, so it's always resolving over and over. So, you know, that kind of, you know, allows you to able to like repeat it over and over and it doesn't and it, and it works basically. Um, and maybe you guys also seen my like ARP video, my ARP shorts, it's the same idea. Um, you know, it basically is like, uh, you know, playing the one, five, seven and five or uh, one, five, seven and one alternating between those two. But, you know, technically the seven which is the B of this key, right? Because you have one, two, three, four, five, which is G, six, A, and then seven of the key is B. Technically, that's kind of like a weird note, you know, kind of a weird note, kind of gives that like, you know, like something wrong is playing or it doesn't sound as, you know, pleasant if you will, but, you know, um, but when you write it like in a way where it's like, you know, I don't know. You know, see, like, technically, like, that's kind of a weird note, but, you know, you know, obviously this melody is not like a crazy bang or anything, but, you know, you get the idea that even though it's technically kind of a weird note to put in your chord, it still works. Um, because again, it's doing the, the rule of the one, five, you know. But yeah, just going back to uh, the, uh, the whole example of the ARPs, 
you know, the one I played on the shorts, this is in the key of A flat, or sorry, B flat or A sharp, whatever you want to call it. A B flat being the one, F being the five, seven, which is the A, and then back to the one. And then so, you know, that works because, you know, again, the same, you know, rule or application. And then even here, you're adding the tonic or the one of the key in her vocal saying go. So again, that's why it works. Yeah, so that's basically the theory behind, you know, why those certain notes work. And, you know, when you're finding these vocals, it's not always doing like a one, a combination of the one and five. Sometimes it's just like the one and two or, you know, I'm not too sure what this note here is, but it's basically, it's, again, it's not always going to be like a combination of the one and five. Sometimes it's another, you know, uh, note in the key and then always, but it's always resolving at the one, which makes it basically, uh, basically repeatable. And, you know, basically just trying to find that, uh, you know, repeating phrase, usually like it's at the end of like a chorus or breakdown that resolves the, uh, I guess, the, uh, the bar itself. Um, you know, just to kind of give you a quick example, um, rather, rather than from this track, if you, um, if you ever heard of, uh, I think her name is, uh, Zara Larison, uh, I'll never forget you. And the part where she says, day I die, that part, day I die, die, you know, resolving or being that root note. And I don't know, day I, whatever, you know, those notes are. You can repeat that, you know, it goes, day I die, day I die, day I die, you know, and then you go from there. Obviously, I can't really sing the melody, but, um, you know, you get the idea. And in general, with these like type of like repeating vocal, like buildups or maybe just buildups in general, you kind of want to end it with some type of like ending phrase from the vocal. And in this case, we basically just took, you know, what was before the right here that was being repeated. If you can be right and you don't always have to do this I don't think but I think this is just like a good you know rule of thumb uh, and then additionally you don't even ha you don't even have to make the build up like this either you can just simply uh, you know else depending on the vocal as well but uh, in this particular case I could even just use this vocal here and it would probably work for the build up so yeah, that would technically work too. Um, and you could have like your, you know, vocal chop or lead, you know, with the auto filter coming up in the background basically. But for this job in particular, I wanted to do the repeating thing. And that's really the only reason why I decided to use that. And basically the processing, again, it was more of a something to like not make it dry, basically. So here we just have your basic EQ, cutting around the 150. Uh, we have some Fahala Vintage using the color now, rather than something like night, something 1970s or the older versions. And then we have some delay here. Uh, and I'll also show you some demodulation as well. Uh, and then um, some utility, basically, because we're actually uh, modulating I believe it was the decay, um, just to basically kind of wash it out as the buildup comes up. And then when you do that, uh, basically it's gonna have some gain. It was either the, the decay or the mix. I forgot which one, we'll, we'll check it out. But um, basically when you do that, the gain kind of goes up. So that's basically what we're doing here, to uh, minusing some of the gain so that way it doesn't overpower the lead, for example. So yeah, we're basically just doing um, minus 5 dBs, basically when we start doing the, uh, the automation. So yeah, we have some, oh, okay, it looks like it's going to the mix, and we're basically having it go all the way up to almost 100%, basically. And basically another automation for the filter. Same idea, we're basically just washing it out <clears throat> so that way it kind of blends with everything in there uh, and then there's actually some um, modulation on the uh, on the delay as well for the dry wet uh, yeah again it's, it's basically all to kind of like make it wash uh, basically 
you know, smooth transition. Yeah, so that's basically the idea behind that. And yeah, I think that's really it for the repeating vocal there. And then we have some effects here. Crash, uh, some sweeps, downs. And uh, some actually some automation here. Basically, it's just to kind of get, again, same idea, kind of get to give it more of a, uh, a greater effect for the sweep. And yeah, it's just the reverb, basically. I'll kind of show you without uh, the automation here. And then with the automation. So yeah, same idea, kind of giving that washout effect, very similar to what we did here with the vocal, basically. And I think you would get, you know, you get the same idea if we didn't, you know, have all the automation here. It basically just wouldn't transition as well, basically. So that, that was kind of the idea. And then these are just some like, you know, cashmere sweep downs that you can find in cashmere's pack, all on splice. And the same with this Oliver one, uh, also found on splice. All right, so then we have the uh, build up drums. This is what it kind of sounds like by itself. All right, so first we had kind of have like this reverse crash here, I think it was. Yeah, this should be a crash. Yeah, it's a crash. So that's your first crash. That's another crash basically just to kind of amplify the next uh, four bars. Basically, you know, show you, uh, kind of let the listener know that another something about else is about to happen in the next four bars, basically. That's why we have another uh, sweep up there too, because basically like, you know, Everything's kind of building up more, like the vocals repeating more, the drums are coming up and stuff like that. So that's the idea behind that. And then we have basically this snare build up here. And then basically we're using, it was like, um, oh yeah, it's some Kashmir tight snare. Again, you can find Kashmir's pack and then I uh, clap as well. This is kind of like the pattern behind it. And the reason, you know, being for these two things here or the two, the two snares here is to kind of give it some variation and not really like have it just play the same thing over and over. It kind of adds a bit more interest or, you know, rhythmic interest in it, you know, same thing here. And again, it's like, you know, we're, we're building up towards it, you know, and it's bass playing at every uh, fourth of a beat, you know, one, two, three, and four, and then it slowly builds up to, you know, eighth notes and stuff like that. And then um, <clears throat> on the snare, we have a frequency shifter here. That's basically what's kind of, again, doing that, like, uh, washing out thing. Same idea, kind of give that nice transition to it. Um, and then there's uh, some reverb. There might be some modulation on the reverb too, just because the snare was actually a little bit dry initially prior to um, putting the Valhalla Vintage on. Nope, doesn't look like there's any. Um, I thought there would be some modulation, but no, there's not. So it's just a frequency shift that's kind of changing, uh, you know, doing that effect. Now, the reason why you can actually do this with other uh, plugins too, like uh, I think you can also do it with transposing it. Uh, you can even also use little Alter Boy um, and then have it modulate with the pitch and the formants. Uh, gives you a very similar effect as well. I think the reason why uh, Nerco or Jack decided to use the frequency shifter, and I think he learned this from, uh, I believe he learned this from AU5, was that uh, the frequency shifter doesn't really like, you know, mess with, I think, the way it sounds and it keeps the sample, like, I guess, the, as the original sample, I think, as much as possible. So I think that's why, um, you know, we went with the, the frequency shifter. And also here's the snare without the reverb. And then here's the snare with the reverb. But yeah, it's pretty dry. Um, so that's why the reverb was there. And yeah, the clap, I don't think has anything besides a reverb as well. Yeah, but that's that layer. 
And then next we have this like Kashmir cinematic, um, basically also found from Kashmir sample pack. Same idea with the um, frequency shifter there. And then here's the uh, automation for the uh, frequency shifter for the cinematic one, as well as the snare buildup. Literally just copy and pasted the first one from the snare buildup and then put it onto the cinematic and then uh, so forth. And then this is actually a loop from um, sample pack. And then basically the, the loop sounds much different. But yeah, basically uh, Jack basically kind of broke it up, kind of to make, you know, make it your own sound and stuff like that, because I'm pretty sure these loops are quite popular. So if you don't like change the loop, again, nothing wrong with lo using loops at all. It's just, you know, they're probably commonly used. So if you want to make a sound more original, kind of like break it up, break it up a little bit and change the rhythms and stuff like that. But yeah, that's basically that. And then next we have another layer here. I think this is a marching snare. Same idea with the frequency shifter. Um, this is actually, I think, and this is another loop from Kashmir's sample pack. Let's see. Yeah, Cart Kashmir Margin Snare Loop. And again, just used the particular snare because I think that was a particular sound he was looking for. And some EQ, just because it was playing some lower end that we didn't, really didn't need. All right, that's that. But uh, basically here, um, I can't really open this because I think uh, it's going to crash. So I'm just going to not open the contact. But this is basically your action strike uh, drums. Um, it sounds like this. And it's basically kind of making up to where like uh, that, th that this is not playing anything. So it's kind of just adding to that rhythm basically. And the snare here is basically following the same uh, rhythm as the uh, cinematic drums, basically. Um, and then pretty much the reason why Jack decided to go with action strikes is because uh, there's another great VST called Damage, uh, also from Contact, um, that has a great library. But he felt like, you know, I think by, that, by this point, m more or less most of the feature or popular feature based uh, songs, you can definitely just hear the same damage drum so that's why you know just to change it up a little bit and make something a little different but i don't think there's anything wrong per se with using damage i'm sure like you know you can uh figure out a new pattern or rhythm rhythm that you know may uh be a bit new but it just i guess the sound of the drums itself were a bit um a little bit overused but i i, I would still you know wouldn't say anything wrong doing it i feel like still use it and i definitely would still use them as well uh and then the next layer is a kick that's what it sounds like. And this is basically just a kick that I got from the, the drop, but with a bit of EQ, just because we didn't really need all the high end from it. And then with the EQ. So yeah, that's, bas that's basically the reason why. Um, and it's just kind of like adding it all together because it's not really playing like every uh, beat, unlike the snare. Um, it's playing like at every like, you know, half beat rather than a fourth beat. And basically as these are playing now at I think a, a quarter beat. Yeah. Now these are playing at uh, an eighth beat. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Aside from this one, this was 16th, but yeah. And then, yeah. It's, uh, same thing goes for the snare. If I didn't mention that yet, it's basically going, you know, following the same rhythm as these these snares up here, um, you know. And this one's kind of following the kick. Uh, and then also, if I didn't mention it yet either, this is um, one's pan to the right, and then this one's pan to the left just to basically make it a bit more wide and rather than just being all like, you know, all stuck in the middle of the mix, you know, basically dividing it can help, you know, 
make him f uh, feel or sound more full. And basically here we have some fills, just, uh, I don't know if I mentioned this either, but we have some fills that are basically just kind of introducing you that something new is coming. It's basically some like cashmere toms. And I think just for time's sake, um, he just transposed it sometimes. Maybe ideally you may want to uh, find different samples, but I think this will work just fine too. And this is what it sounds like. Yeah, so basically just a you know, transition. Um, you can also use like other things too, like, uh, or sound effects like a sweep, you know, anything that basically gives enough of a transition that something new is coming. And then we also have another snare here, which is also just like a cashmere fill. Sounds like this. Same idea here. It's, um, basically just kind of for time's sake, I think I just kind of like broke it up and then transposed it. Basically just a transition to um, the drop. And then there's also some uh, delay on this crash here. Same idea, you know, just to kind of fill up this space, uh, the transitional uh, space with some delay. And then, yeah, I think that's it for the drums itself. Uh, next up is just kind of the processing within the drums. So basically just the, the processing in the drums is, or on the drums is basically just to kind of like you know, glue it all together and make it sound like they're all one, like, cohesive sound. So, um, you know, we have some saturation here, very light in the saturation, at a different style, too, because these all kind of give a different sound. And then not 100% of the wet. And this is basically what the decapitator does. I'll just turn off everything. So that's without the uh, decapitator, and then with. out and then with so it basically just kind of like makes everything warmer basically and then um, we have a uh, glue compressor here which kind of just like glues everything together basically bit you know it's very very minimal on the threshold and um, basically just doing like one db and then we're basically minusing one or adding one uh, db back just to make up for it and then you know really quick two to one ratio really quick release and the attack uh, uh, so forth and then we have eq here on the mid side mode and then basically clicking um side and then basically just kind of like taking out anything like below 120 because you don't definitely don't want any like side information around those frequencies. Uh, this is basically without it. So yeah, that's basically just to clean it up basically. And then a limiter, uh, this is also for like mixing and mastering basically. But it's basically like since there's like a lot of loud transients that may clip and stuff like that, uh, that's the reason why we have this uh, limiter here because later for mastering, I think it may, you know, have some things that, uh, I forgot the, the technical name for it. It was either going to like maybe cause some phase or some issues later on if you basically have a clip now and then, you know, try to fix it with the limiter later during the master. So that's basically just to kind of, you know, avoid that. Um, and basically you can use any limiter and these settings may be a little bit different depending on the limiter but for mine uh, we put input gain uh, add four and then output gain minus four and then rather than using suppress we're using um, the clip I think just because it works better for the certain purpose that we're using it you know it's, it's very light and basically we're just looking at this just to see when it comes into action with uh, Jack's limiter, it was actually at, at, at like, I think minus two dBs or something. We had to put mine a bit more just because it, 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 was, it wasn't kicking in at that dB. Yeah, so that's basically it for um, the drum processing. And I'll kind of share with you what it sounds like without it and then with it after. And then here's with. like much more together
like the saturation too, like it may make it sound like it's louder, but when you look at like the master itself, uh, wherever the channel is, you'll notice that the volume is actually um, either less or the same. I can't remember exactly, but I think that's a trick for like getting your, your masters or your volume louder without actually technically making it louder. But yeah, I mean, aside from that, it's also like mixed really well too in terms of like dBs. Like there's not really any frequencies that are like, or any like effects or drums that are like louder, super louder than the other or anything like that. Everything's more or less mixed in really well together. So, you know, this basically just kind of like adds the cherry on the top just to kind of like, again, put everything together. And then next up is the instruments. We have um, basically the Alinium Pluck that I showed in my one of my previous tutorials. It's literally the same thing, this is what it sounds like. The only difference is that uh, the decay on this is higher. So basically kind of like making it sound less plucky and more a little bit more sustained compared to when I showed in my tutorial. In my tutorial, I probably had it a little below five. And then the releases uh, also, um, I'll, I'll show you the modulation stuff too, but we have a more of a release too, which makes it sound bigger and kind of like opening up um, for the buildup base or for the drop basically. And then the, the cutoff is less too, so you hear less of the noise compared to my tutorial. And that's literally pretty much more or less, I think that's it, um, the only diff changes that I made. Uh, everything else is more or less the same in terms of all the EQing and stuff. But yeah, that's that. Uh, oh yeah, I guess I'll just show you like the modulation for that. So we just have the filter cutoff opening up and then um, the release as well. Again, the release is just to kind of like make it bigger or wider. And yeah, that's it for this pluck. And then we have a second pluck just to kind of like make up for the mids because basically without this pluck it sounded kind of like mid empty or whatever i kind of play without it and then with this pluck so yeah it, it it basically just kind of like, you know, helps again make the drop sound or the buildup sound more full. Uh, and this one's more situational, you know, if you have a plug that's already like kind of filling up the space, then you won't need it. Uh, just in this particular case, um, Jack felt like we needed it because, yeah, there definitely was some like mid frequencies or body mixing to it. Uh, but yeah, this is just basically a very simple plug just to kind of, you know, have mat like almost similar like sounds to the other plug just so they can kind of blend well together. Um, but yeah, this is basically just your basic saw wave, so uh, lessen the detune a bit, uh, another saw wave, you know, change the position to your, um, here we go, basic MCB, and also changing like the position to where you, you know, where you want it to sound, and then, you know, little, uh, again, down on the detune, having this type of shape for your pluck, basically, putting the envelope on the cutoff to make that plucky um, sound, and then same idea, we'll have some noise there. Um, and yeah, I think that's really it for this part. And then, yeah, the MG Low 24. And then some hyper dimension for, you know, the host effect or make them a little bit wider. And then uh, some distortion to make it warmer, basically. And same idea with the modulation here. We have, uh, I think, an opening cutoff. And I think that, yeah, opening cutoff. And then also some just like gain reduction because it's going to get louder. Um, when you open it up, and I think, I don't think we did for this one. We probably should, but yeah. And then also just some like basic EQ here, cutting out everything like below 100, and then making a dip here, just cause like it was pretty body heavy and we wanted to make some space uh, for the bass basically. Same thing with this pluck, you know, same idea with the EQs. And I think th there's also this that's off, cause that's basically we don't want, what the sound is gonna, go into the area that's not supposed to have it. So that's the reason why it's the, uh, the modulation's off here. And I think the same thing was done with a few other of like the, um, you know, the vocal chop, for example, which again, I can't show, uh, but also like um, this uh, vocal thing, because there's a bunch of reverb and if we didn't turn it off, the, the reverb would basically just kind of go through. So yeah, 
that's basically the idea behind that. And then uh, we have this um, base here. It's like a, a digital base, same pluck shape as the previous pluck. Um, you know, same same idea here, mapping that to the cutoff and then using the crush boil from digital. So less on the detune, four unison, some noise. And rather than like uh, putting the noise, you know, turning the noise here on, uh, we took it off just cause like it has this like nice attack that gave a bit of en more energy. And basically have this like more, I guess, pointy shape modulating with the level here. And this is what it sounds like by itself. And that's the sub. And if we were to turn off the noise, or rather turn that on, it wouldn't give us the same attack. And then here's the chords for uh, the instruments. We basically have a uh, A minor chord here. Yeah, nothing, you know, just your basic A minor chord playing the A and the E, which is the one and five of the A minor chord, and the C, which is the three, and then the E up here. And then we have the uh, F major, I think, ninth chord here, because there's a G here. And basically, um, you know, that's what gives it that feel. Because if I were to put this at an F, which makes it just a regular, you know, F major chord, it'd sound like this. So yeah, that's the reason why I decided to make it the G. And then in the chord itself is basically just playing the one of the chord, which is the F, the five, which is the C, at the end, the G and then a C up here. And then, you know, as you notice, um, many of my tutorials, you know, I like to have like one note kind of droning the whole entire time, which is the root note of the key. Again, this is the key of C, so the root note is C. So I basically just have that through every chord. Again, you can even do the G, but in this case, I just didn't want to put it. So I liked it like this already. And then uh, we have the C major chord here. I think it's just in its basic form, basically. This is C and G, one and five. C again, and then E, which is a three of a C major. And then we basically just have the uh, G chord suspended. Um, G playing the fifth of G chord is D, uh, and then B, which is um, the three, and then the C again, which makes it suspended, and then up here a D again. And together, again, with everything, it sounds like this. Yeah, so again, that's like how you really get that like full and like complete sounding drop is, you know, basically having everything fill out the frequencies that are needed um, and just kind of like making up for each other basically to get a really nice full sounding and complete mix. Um, and then lastly, just to kind of show you, uh, so again, since again, I can't really show you the vocal chop, but we can use this, I guess, vocal for now just to, as a temporary, you know, placement, just to kind of give you the basic idea of if this were to be a vocal chop, you would kind of like introduce it with an auto filter, you know, just because like if we didn't introduce the vocal chop in this build up area, it might sound kind of like just comes out of nowhere in the drop, you know, so we're kind of like preparing the audience or the listener uh, that, you know, this is what the melody's going to sound like and they're kind of getting ready for it basically. So basically here I just added um, an auto filter. Yeah, so basically just kind of going up here to around here and then just opening all the way just so that you can hear the entire thing. This is basically just the vocal that what comes next. This is kind of like what it would sound like if you were to add this like, you know, uh, drop melody. And I might even side chain it. Let's just see how it sounds. Yeah, so that I guess that situation all depends. Um, I think either way could work, but again, yeah, this is like, this is just kind of showing you just the idea of, you know, if you were to have a vocal chop or even some like lead layer, you know, that's a really good idea of how you could introduce it uh, for your drop and stuff like that.
but yeah i think honestly that's probably going to be it for uh, this video so yeah uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and then um, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't yet. Also, please hit the bell notification symbol so you know when my next video goes live. I plan to post more videos like this definitely down the line and probably like maybe even more down the line. This is a possibility. I'm, I actually have some artists who are already you know ready for it or interested later, but having other artists come in and you know talk about their experiences maybe or even do you know breakdown projects and stuff like that. So that's all you know down in the future and stuff like that and also sharing probably some you know personal things about my own journey and stuff like that in music and then um also follow me on my social medias i post shorter you know music production tips on there like on my instagram tiktok so if you want to see more like you know shorter version uh production tips definitely follow me on those and then also join my discord server i'm looking to create a community where we can all help each other grow production wise music and you know all kind of support each other through our own personal journey to music and stuff like that so if that's something you find interesting, definitely join the Discord. Um, again, I will leave all the links in the description below. And yeah, thank you so much again for watching. Until next time, much love. Peace out.